This is Kara Elizabeth Walker. Born and raised in a very comfortably diverse community in Stockton, California, Kara was first introduced to art by her father, who was a painter himself. At the age of 13, Kara moved to where she was exposed to the exact opposite of her hometown. A location with active and constant racism, Kara lived in Stone Mountain in Atlanta, Georgia during the 1980s. Reminded of all the pain and confusion in her experience of starting off in a comfortable environment to a chaotic racist area, Walker is an artist she is today, making works of art that spark the stereotypes of her personal perception and how that still involves her and her community in the modern day. She became one of the several African-American women who use art to engage and challenge visualizations of race. In Walker's opinion, painting was the center of all art and she wanted to get away from the expectations and tradition that came from painting, which led her to abandoning painting and getting into a medium of cutout. Cutout was the media Walker began to stick with as she states, you get your positive and your negative and I really like the dialect there. You deal with the positive and the negative space, like a silhouette. One of her many artworks that included this media is image 243 of Darkie Town Rebellion, made by Kara Walker in 2001, cut paper and projection on wall, 4.3 by 11.3 meters in the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. Now let me start off by saying this is the least sexual of Walker's work. Thank God. It was inspired by a book called American Primitive Painting that presented artworks of unschooled artists. Walker stumbled upon this book and a page caught her eye. The artist was anonymous, anonymous. The artist was anonymous, dated 1860. And so we see the form of the silhouetted figures all in action, all classified differently along with a colorful view projected on top of it all. And with that in mind, let's expose the disturbing meaning behind it all. Including a big importance of slavery in African American history, the Darkie Town Rebellion addresses stereotypes that inform how popular culture perceives the community today. Darkie Town Rebellion holds many stereotypes before and after Civil War. The lighting and idealized caricatures draw the viewer into the beauty, only to find the horrific truth of some kind of fictional history lesson, but with a twist. The image of the entire life-size freeze becomes more tragic with exaggerated gore, which Walker explains is intentional. The effect of the abstract lights brings a sense of a double projection when the viewer takes a step into the life-size work of art. The overhead projector reveals the viewer included in the silhouette figures, which tries to acknowledge the continuing impact on America's radical attitudes. All in all, the Darkie Town Rebellion was a public work of art to test the viewer's tolerance for imagery that occupies an unclear space between racism and race affirmation. The work unleashed horrors, but also introduced the public into the contemporary art. As for the form, she draws on stereotype using silhouettes to explore radical identification. Walker's media has missing information of things like color and face details, but enough to make out power relations in race. How? The exaggeration of lips, types of hair, clothing, and are you ready for this? Butts. Yes, ladies and gents, booties play a huge role in Kara's work. To determine color from white, especially from the female African-American figures. It all shows diversity throughout the entire work. The diversity ranges from black to white, wealthy to poor, and old to young. We see in the randomized located installations that there are different aspects of what Kara wants the public to view. One is the three figures partaking in an ambiguous erotic perversity, including a man whose leg is severed. Oh snap, poor guy. A woman holding some type of plunge-like object above where a baby appears, suggesting a white woman disposing the evidence of her husband's affair with a slave. <gasps> Scandalous. A woman taking care of her multiple newborns, her breasts for nursing, exaggerated to draw attention to her purpose in life. Two malnourished boys walk to their master. A female African-American teenager holds a flag that looks like a colonial ship sail. A man sits in a tree, possibly a musician with a harmonica, or just a man enjoying a pipe floating balloon looking. All of the figures depict some sort of romanticized stereotype. 
The form is exaggerated and exotic at the same time as idealized to prove a point of African history and how it is still effective and stressed about in the 21st century. Another work done by Carol Walker that did not involve the medium of cut paper was the sculpture named A Subtlety or The Sugar Baby made with, you guessed it, sugar along with molasses. Created in 2014 and located in New York City, Kara decided to create the enlarged sculpture to experiment with the medium of sugar. Kara does research of sugar coming from sugarcane and the history that African Americans harvested it. She based the shape off of a sphinx depicting a nude woman with African features. Now the BET image, the portrait mask of Moya Yanso from the early 20th century CE made of wood, brass, and pigment. With a height of 36.7 centimeters, the work has the style and characteristics of the Baole people. In the village of Kami, located in West Africa, many masks were created with specific traditional celebrations of the Baole people. There were two types of masks, Mblo and Gali. The Mblo masks were special performing masks that male dancers would perform in. The dancers and skits performed were known as the Bagbo Masquerade. The Bagbo was a dance performed for an audience by a dancer who has the blow mask, like the one depicted, and would have the mask portrayed covering his face while he is accompanied by singers, dancers, orators, and drummers in a series of skits. At the end of the ceremony dance, the emblem mask was kept out of sight in a private home of who it belongs to. In this case, the mask was acquired by the family of Moya Yanso. Bagba masks always were a depiction of a member that the Baole people wanted to honor in their society, like Moya, who purposely looked different from the mask as a concept of age and beauty. In this photo, we could see Moya Yanto along with some portrait masks held by her stepson in 1971. The mask was Moya Yanto's image carved by Aoi Kimau, and the mask would be worn by a dancer and was accompanied by Moya Yanso in many celebrations as she would dance with the mask until she was no longer physically able. The mask dancer for the specific carved work was originally worn by Moya Yanso's husband, but later passed down to her sons to pass tradition. The basic form of the portrait mask includes an oval face with an elongated nose, small open mouth, and slit eyes. Going more into detail, this mask includes subtle asymmetrical features in the eyes on purpose. Some visual evidence of the work's purpose to show age and beauty is the half-slit eyes and the high forehead suggesting modesty and wisdom. The beard-like triangular pattern from the ears down to the chin and the nasal labial fold or smile lines from the lips to the nose suggest age. Triangular brass is portrayed along the cheeks and forehead dazzling in the sunlight, a suggestion of health. Although the hairstyle is known to be realistic, the work itself is more idealistic in form, but also asymmetrical in the eyes on purpose to form a sense of realism. Last but not least, the abstract crown projecting six tubular pieces are idealized to show an inner state of beauty and morality related to Moya Yanso. Over time, portrait masks of the Baole people became less common after African objects began its journey of being sold. Between the two works of art, the Darkie Town Rebellion and the Embo portrait mask of Moya Yanto share an idea of African history art pieces. One addresses history while the other is a part of history as an object used to celebrate tradition. The Darkie Town Rebellion's figures, along with the portrait masks, are visually related in that they are both idealized for depicting the function. In addition, both works also use abstract visuals such as colorful abstract projecting lights on the cutouts and the abstract crown on the mask's head, both for the reason to depict beauty.